<laughs> the camera with the little yeah camera thigh. Good deal. Now we know. Okay, so welcome to our Thursday morning live. This is Trigger that I have today. We've had unusually cold weather for us last few days. Uh, night before last, our low was in the teens. I think it was about 17. Last night wasn't as cold. I think it was about freezing. Was our low supposed to warm up to I believe the east today, and then this afternoon it's put the rain and turn cold again. I've got uh, I'll be leaving tomorrow to go to a show. I'll be taking Hank. I'll be showing at a NRCHA show in Andalusia, Alabama. I want to get another wrap on this girth and. Snug it up, walk him a little bit. He hasn't been out of his stall in a little bit because of the the rainy, icy weather. We had freezing rain. We don't get snow here. Well, once in a while, we'll get freezing rain. And by once in a while, I mean like once every two or three years, we'll get freezing rain. And the day before yesterday was our freezing rain. So I tighten the saddle, walk him around just a little bit. All right, thanks for joining me. Hope you're a little warmer than we are. In our, I am probably a little warmer, but I'm not much warmer. I know I'm warmer than uh, Jennifer in Ontario. I've been warmer than her. So uh, I don't like cold weather. I don't do good with cold weather. You can pretty much figure that however I'm dressed, it's about 20 degrees warmer than what it looks like I'm dressed for. I just don't like cold weather. So I got Trigger here. We're going to work him a little bit. He'll have a show coming up soon. I show him in uh, Louisiana Stock Horse Association in stock horse classes. Let's see how he's going to handle not being out of a stall or ridden in a few days. Got a little hump in his back. See if we can walk that out. So, uh, Trigger, if you've been watching a while, you probably recognize him. But Trigger is a BLM Mustang. He was captured out of Wyoming and originally started at a prison in Idaho. I'm not familiar with the programs up there. I know uh, prison in uh, Louisiana has a pretty big horse program. They actually have a horse show open to the public that uh, a lot of people around here go see. It's pretty interesting. They'll do a lot of the rodeo events and uh, they'll do like bull riding, but the way they do it, instead of getting scored like you see on the rodeo, like you see on TV, They'll turn out six bulls and riders all at one time, and they're all in the arena, and the last one still on wins. So uh, 
it's uh, pretty exciting to watch. I'm sure they have some serious injuries once in a while, but most of the people that's riding in it are in the prison and this is their thing to do that they get to do. And uh, they actually, the prisoners make crafts in the shop there and, and you can buy them. And, and it's actually a really neat program. Minus 20 in Edwards Island, yeah. I don't know that we have ever reached minus 20 here. I'm on the Mississippi Gulf Coast, right on the Gulf. My, my ranch is just north of I-10. But I actually live south of I-10. I live about three blocks from the Gulf. It's about a 15 minute drive for me to come up here back and forth. I always have people ask, why don't you want to live at your and my response back to them is, why don't you want to live in your office? Even though this is a leisurely activity to most people, and what they do for fun on the weekends, it, it's, it's a job. And I like to work Monday through Friday, regular office hours as much as I can, and I like to be able to go home. I do have uh, Melissa. She's my business partner here on the ranch. Right now she's living in a guest cottage right over kind of across from the barn, but we're building her a house in the back corner. And she lives up here, and she has a regular job. She works for the Department of Forestry. So uh, she's always around, but I, that way I get to go home. I get some off time. So I've just been walking Trigger around. I always just walk a little bit. I said he had a little bit of bow in his back. And uh, he's, he's still a little bit fresh. He's not wanting to buck or get me off. And he's never really been a bad bucker. When I, when I first got him, he came from Idaho, I believe it was fall year ago. Not this past fall, but the fall previous, if I remember right. Or maybe spring, I don't remember. Either way, last summer was his first summer down here. And he had a pretty hard time with the summer, but uh, he's really, he's liking this weather. This is, feels like home to him, I guess. And uh, the little gray Mustang I have, uh, Breeze, she also came from, was captured out of Wyoming and came, and came to me through Idaho. So it's kind of interesting. Both Trigger and Breeze were actually uh, born in capture. They had captured their mo her, their mamas and Fort Myers, 66. Yeah, I uh, wish I had 66 here right now. And uh, yeah, it'll be Hank that I'm taking to uh, the Andalusia show. But anyways, both of those, both Trigger and Breeze came was captured out of Wyoming. Well, their moms was captured. They were both born in captivity and came through Idaho before they came here. And uh, it's really interesting to work with the two of them. They're, they're built a lot different, but they have real similar minds. And uh, it's really interesting to see that. I get a lot of Mustangs that come from more of the Southwest, like Arizona, uh, Nevada, that area. And they're different. They have a different mind. They're a different. Uh, I, I know, I'm sure they go back to different horses. So uh, a little bit different to work with. It's really interesting. So I've been walking him around a little bit. Let's walk a little bit to the right. Walk a little bit the other way. He, uh, that head tossing that he's doing, he basically just, he's telling me he wants to be turned loose just to run off some energy. He, uh, he just has a lot of energy just getting him out of the stall. So I'm going to walk him around a little bit. And I'll work him on some of the ranch stuff that I do with him, uh, throwing a rope, dragging a log, and uh, try to answer as many questions as I can uh, that y'all have about my, my training program or the horses. If there's any questions you want, have, want to ask about any of the horses that I have. I, uh, I think a lot of you have been following me for a while, so you know that, uh, but maybe not everybody. So all the horses that you see here 
in training the horses that have been sent to me. I get them from all over the country. About the only horse here that belongs to me is Bob and Mac. And the rest, the rest of them are all sent to me for training. Let's go ahead and take him up to a trot and see what we get. Oh, he didn't buck. That was a good start. He's still wanting to do his own thing. We'll get that worked out. He hasn't really wanted to buck in a long time. When he first came to me, he was already started, but when he first came to, to me, if you would get up and sit down in the saddle real hard, he'd give you a buck or two. But uh, he hasn't wanted to do that in a while. Fort Worth. Hopefully, I'll be that way before long, and end of the year. Been in the teens for days, 41 today. Well, uh, I always said I lived in the winter, lived in the south, and I don't ever complain about the heat. We don't get as hot as some other parts of the country because we're right on the Gulf. We'll get up close to 100, but we'll have 100 degree weather with 95% humidity. So that makes our heat index pretty high. One day last year, our heat index was 134, which was miserable. I think we had a temperature of 109 and then the heat index made it 134. It was pretty rough. The problem with that kind of humidity if you sweat, but it doesn't, you don't dry, you just stay wet. Getting his mind on me a little bit. Those of you that have been watching me a while, you kind of familiar with my training program and how I do it, but I'm sure a lot of people have questions. He's kind of tossing his head around a little bit. Mustangs in general, and I put out a blog the other day kind of about different breeds and different tendencies that different breeds have. The Mustangs in general, you have to work a lot harder to get them soft in the face. Quarter horses that have been bred to show, you, they breed horses that have made it through training and have done certain things and you breed those. And in the process, you get characteristics, you get traits like being soft in the face. Well, Mustangs bred by who survived. And in general, they, they tend to be a little bit stiffer in the face. You have to work harder to get them soft and generally a little bit stiffer in their body. What kind of bit? This is uh, just a little low port um grazing bit i rarely ride with bro any broken mouth bits i own a couple i rarely ride with them for several reasons uh, this one has probably an inch inch and a quarter port just a little port and i uh, believe it's a 3 8 diameter mouthpiece uh, because of the direction that i go in with uh ranch horse nrcha I rarely ride in broken mouth bits. And the other part of that is a more bendy bit is gonna get your horse more wiggly through the body where a straighter bit with an unbroken bit is gonna get your horse straighter through the body. The program that I do, the training program, I spend so much time getting them through the body. They're pretty wiggly. So by putting a straight mouth bit in them uh, or an unbroken bit, that helps me get their body straight, lift the shoulders up, and then I control the shoulders with my legs. That's just part of my, my breeding program and how I do it. Good question. Thanks for the question. Okay, let's see. I'm watching it on TV, but what I see on TV is lagging a little bit behind the video. Just a few seconds. What kind of horse is it? What the horse's name? Oh, Norway. Thanks for watching, Nadine. What time is it over there? 
We're uh, roughly 9.30 Central Time here. What time is it in Norway? I'd love to visit Norway. Never been there. But uh, this is Trigger. He has a BLM Mustang that I'm riding. Um, I'm not sure I'd want to visit Norway in the wintertime. But I bet it's a beautiful country to go see. I have, I do the ancestry thing, and according to it, I have a lot of ancestors that go back to Norway. On my mom's side, it's uh, a lot of Portuguese, a lot of Portuguese and Italian. Of course, in the United States, we're all a mix of everybody and on my dad's side it's Scottish and Norwegian uh -uh. so he's see how he's kind of walking away he's not really spooking but he's walking away basically what he's telling me here is I don't want to not really spooking. So what I'm going to do about this I don't want to is I'm going to give him something to do. I'm going to put him to work. He has done this a lot. He is not green to this. So if he was green to it, I'd be handling it different. Go. Good boy. All right, we're going to switch sides with the rope. And then we'll walk off. If he was acting fresh and then acted like he didn't want to, I'm going to go ahead and start off dragging it long. Get his mind in the game. His mind just isn't in it. He would like to have been turned out. There we go. Now we're getting his mind in the game. I'm sure he would like to have been turned out and had some free pasture time, but we'll get to that. I'll make a loop around and see what questions I find on the camera on the TV rather I can't uh, can't see it right this when I'm this far away I have to be a little closer so I show him in in versatility ranch horse which involves ranch trail ranch riding cow classes that kind of thing and uh, Showed him a few times last year. I'll show him a few times this year. Then, uh, then he'll probably go home for his owner to show. Grand Prairie, Alberta, minus 23 here. Balmy compared to minus 44. Once to me, once it gets below 32, it's just all cold. How old is Trigger? He is, believe he is six. We showed him as a junior horse last year. So you got to be five or under to be junior horse. So I'm pretty sure he is six now. All horses' birthdays are January 1st. So he would have just had a birthday two weeks ago. The reason all horses' birthdays are January 1st is so horses of similar age can be shown together. And whatever age they are on January 1st, that's the age group that they compete in. So horse, any horse under five, five or under is considered a junior horse. So he showed last year as a junior horse. Now that he is six, he'll have to show him what they call um, uh, maturity, maturity horses. Angela, thanks for watching. Glad you caught us live too. I tried to do, all right, last time I tried to set it up so that it was scheduled. And from our phone, we couldn't figure out how to go live from that scheduled link. So I'm not sure how to do that. We might try to set that up later. Uh, I can also do some 
research and see if uh, there's another way that we can do that. We might be able to set the camera up earlier and then just let it wait, set, uh, waiting for us to press the go live button. I'm not sure, not sure how that works, but we're going to figure it out. Rope's a little high, it went over him. I've got it a little long. We're gonna change directions and I'll shorten the rope a little bit. Since I show trigger in Ranch Trail, and he knows how to do everything, I don't have to really spend a lot of time dwelling on this. We just need to do it occasionally just to remind him that he knows how to do it. And so that when he sees the board with the rope, it's just like second nature. Like he immediately understands and just goes to work and knows his job. Whoa. Virginia classes, do the judges check the horse's teeth to make sure no one is cheating? They can. It's in the rule book so that they can mouth the horse. Most horses at these shows have some sort of registration papers. And... They work off of the registration papers. They don't have to be registered to show. You can show a great horse, and in, in that case, it would be more likely that they would mile the horse. But that's not, not as common because most of them are registered. And like him, he has his BLM uh, certificate, and it has age and stuff on it. And it is, he's tattooed, too, so you, you could shave the tattoo and read the tattoo and have a more accurate age there than you would by mouthing him. Since he was born in captivity, they know how old he is. And that's like, whoa, 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 back up now. Didn't want to stop me. That's just kind of how he's going to be today. He just... Wants to be turned out, wants to have some free time, and he'll get that today. This is probably, this is <laughs> the worst he is. So that's like if you show in a Futurity or a Derby or that kind of thing. Most of those are breed specific or performance specific, and those horses have registration papers. There was a comment up, and it went up for, it went, yeah, read it to me, please. What is the difference between I'm worried and I don't want to? Uh, you have to know your horse. And like in his situation, we drug logs for hours and hours, a lot. So it's pretty unlikely that he would tell me I'm worried. So you, you have to know your horse and you have to read the horse. And they will react a little bit different. I didn't feel his body get stiff. I, he just didn't want to steer. So if he would have been really worried or really scared, he would have got stiff like he was scared. And he would have had a harder reaction to the board where just I don't want to just means he's just not steering like he should. He's wanting to go where he wants to go. Good question. And as, as a horseman, you have to be able to pick out the difference. You have to be able to see that in your horse because you're going to handle that a whole lot different. If, if he would have been worried, then I would have given him more time to take it in where him just saying, I don't want to, I'm going to take charge. I'm going to be the leader. This is the horse that I did the spooky horse video on. And when he first came, he didn't want to go through mud. And I established my leadership with him working him on those kind of obstacles. So now when he gives me an I don't want to, he knows that I'm going to take charge, I'm going to take uh, leadership. Do you find BLM horses any different to train than traditional domestically bred horses? If so, in what way? Um, my horse gets snorty when word. Snorty does not always mean word. I'll go back and answer the other question. I'm going to answer this one first. Snorty does not always mean worried. Um, if your horse snorts for a reason 
and you take the pressure away, your horse will learn that the pressure will go away when it snorts. It's kind of like working pressure in a release with desensitizing to a bag or something. If you take the bag away at the wrong point, your horse is going to act up. Uh-uh, let's walk. Your horse is going to act up so that you'll take the pressure away. So be careful with snorty. Snorty does not always mean worried. And as far as do I find BLM horses different, yeah, I, I put out a blog article not long ago talking about that. They they're, they haven't been bred to be trained and shown, so they can be pretty inconsistent as far as how far you get with them from one horse to another. Generally, they're not as soft in the face. They're not as soft in the body. Uh, and generally, they have a higher... Uh, flight response, see, hey, Robert just walked around the barn and his head came up. Generally, they have a higher um, uh, flight response and a survival instinct. So you have to account for that. You have to make sure you don't trigger that in your horse. One of my horses was the same with the mud every time to work through it on the ground, then in the saddle. Her, I don't want to is a head toss. Yeah, that's a pretty pretty easy, I don't want to. Um, and you have to be careful when you're working your horse with an object on the ground. I've seen a lot of people just stop and let the horse look at it, wanting them to relax. And that, there's some merit to that. But the other side of that is you're not taking leadership of that horse. You're not showing that horse that you're a good leader and you look out for that horse's best interest. So even though he might learn to be okay with that particular thing at that particular time, you're not using that situation as a teaching opportunity to teach the, your horse that you are a good leader. Let's go over here and I'm gonna pick up my lariat off the wall and uh, working with that a little bit. So if you'll let me pick it up. He should. So like the last time I showed him in stock course, they, they don't really judge whether you catch or not, which is a good thing because I don't rope very good. They're judging, uh -uh, let's go. They're judging how horse your hand, how good your horse stands to let you do those things. And now like at the last one, we had to go pick up a rope and then throw it at a dummy. And like this right here, he knows what it is. He's not afraid of it, but he don't want me to. And this will hurt me when I'm showing. Never mind, I can see the shoe. I'm sorry, I didn't see that question. He, uh, he actually has slide plates on for his raining patterns. He doesn't have a huge slide. You're going to have to get a little closer. He doesn't have a huge slide like a lot of the raining horses you see on TV, but he will slide. There we go. Good boy. Now I'm just going to stand here for a minute. Reward him for... Oh. So let's work this just a little bit. He's not wanting me to, to stand where I want him to stand. I'm going to go out here, trot, ask him to stand. I would really like to stand here. Let's let him stand here now. I'm not going to grab the whip or the rope. Reinforce that this is a good place and out there is a bad place. So now let's go try it another circle. And stand where I want him to stand. There we go. So I'm showing him that this is a, a nicer place to be. Mm. You know better. I could throw it down if I felt like I needed to. He knows this. This is all from being in a stall a little bit. So now I'm going to make him work a little bit. Make him work. You came out here.
and then we're gonna go stand back over there and I'm gonna set it down and we're gonna do it again. It's gonna work. You're not gonna stand, we're gonna work. See two options, work or stand. Yeah, a lot of energy pros to ask exactly what this is. Go work. I usually turn everybody out a lot. Everybody normally gets at least 12 hours a day turned out. And because we had freezing rain and our horses are not used to that kind of weather, they haven't had the turnout time they normally get. Are oh, you gonna let me stand here again? Good boy. Basically, I'm just giving him two options. He comes out here and he works, or he stands over there. Black and white, let him make the decision. And the other part of that is trotting out here, I am burning off a little bit of energy. <laughs> so it should have kind of a twofold benefit. Let's go stand back there. There we go. Oh, you swung your butt around. Let's go move. If I go to a show, I don't want to have to lope a horse down to get them shown. I want to be able to, oh, you didn't want to stand, we'll go another circle. I don't want to have to work them down to be able to show them. I want to get on that horse, warm them up, get their muscles warmed up so they're not going to hurt themselves, get their mind warmed up, and then go show. So even though I don't really like how he's behaving today, it's an opportunity for me to train something, an opportunity for me to teach. If your horse doesn't do what you want to do, it's an opportunity to teach. And then go back. You don't ever want to scold a horse at the place that you want them to stand if you're working a trail obstacle. You don't ever want them to, to scold them there because then they're not going to want to be there. All right, let's go. You're going to leave, scold them out here, make them work. Yeah, I'm not doing anything about his head tossing. The head tossing is not a problem. The head toss is just a symptom of his energy and then we'll stand here have you ever had a training horse you just couldn't work with i have but not a whole bunch of them usually can make all of them better some just depends on what the owner's goals are usually when an owner sends me a horse that's a problem they know it's a problem Do you have a preference in the Arab BLM horses come from in trainability? I've trained a lot of BLM horses, but I really haven't trained like a lot in one particular state to compare to a lot in another state. So that's really hard to answer. Because a lot of times I don't, I don't even know where they come from or kind of the history behind them. And I really think with horses, what if, or with BLM horses, what affects them more than what state? Yeah, my spurs are contacting him. I think you wanted to move. I do want to move. I want to move that way. He knows spurs mean move. Might be move left, might be move right, might be round up. They always mean move, and I do want him to move. Right there, I want you to move. Out here, I'm a bumping with my spurs, with my legs. This is an unpleasant place to be because I want him to be over there. Let's try it again.
stand here. Seemed like the ones from the southwest had more Spanish blood. Probably. Um, another thing with the blood of the uh, BLM Mustangs, originally they were all Spanish horses, all of them. And then later they got more different other breeds got intentionally re released or unintentionally released. So uh, other horses mixed in with them there. Oh, there again. We actually, the owner actually DNA'd this horse. I don't remember how his DNA came back. Uh, if I remember right, it was Portuguese bloodlines. It was Portuguese horses is what he come back as in his DNA. There was some breeds that I'd never heard of before. Not exactly where I want him to stand, but I want to give him a reward for coming over here and letting his feet get still. Good boy. All right, now I'm gonna see if he'll move over and let me position him a little bit better. He knows how to, he knows how to side pass and everything. He's pushing into my left leg. That's why he's tossing his head. Let's leave. It'd be different if he didn't know how. This horse knows how to do everything I'm asking him to do. There you go. That's better. Good boy. Take a step. Good boy. Have you ever worked a basker? I did once a long time ago. And uh, I remember that I had it, but I really don't even remember anything specific about it. It's kind of funny. You remember the really good ones, and you remember the really bad ones. I don't remember much about the in-between ones. I've worked a lot of horses over the years at one time when i was starting a lot of horses i was starting around 50 a year and i did that for probably 10 years now i don't start as many so i don't have as many come in as many different horses yeah move your feet so i'll probably get I don't know, 35 or 40 different horses a year now. And I've been doing this for over 25 years. So I've had quite a few horses. It's kind of funny. I'll get horses that are sons and daughters of horses that I've trained. And it's pretty typical that I'll go someplace, a show or something, and there'll be several horses there that I trained. There we go. Good boy. Thanks, Angela. It's, there's no substitute for experience in actually doing it. You can uh, <laughs> kids like to be <laughs> yeah, I think he really realizes the camera's live. I think it's more from uh, being in a stall, but that, that's part of why I do this live like this. You, you see what happens. You see how the training really works. Even the videos that I put out, we don't edit them a whole bunch. We put the text and stuff on them to help talk about what we're doing. And once in a while, I'll cut out if I'm doing a whole bunch of really boring stuff for a long time. If I was editing this, I probably would cut some of this out just for time-wise because I'd probably have a lot of people leave the video. There we go. Uh, oh, you moved. Let's go, let me go again. But this... But this is the important part about horse training that you don't see in most other places. There's a lot of how to do this and how to do that, but there's a lot more to training than how to. And that's why I do this the way I do it. Well, that's getting soft. You, you don't want to doing it. There he, oh, he started off standing in a better place. And then he backed 
backed up a little bit. Good boy. What I will do here in a minute, when he acts like he's gonna go ahead and stand and exhale and go ahead and say, okay, I'll stand here. I'm gonna stop there. He's not wanting to stand there because of the work that comes with the rope. So we're gonna make it a little easier. It's more like what happens to us when we're, yeah, exactly right. That's exactly why I do it. There's a, uh, a lot of how-to videos out there, but there's a lot more that goes into training than just how-to. The mental state that you, the mental training that you have to do with the horse is a lot different and you have to address that as it happens. So he, he didn't really move his feet there. I asked him to leave. I think he's about to give in and say yes sir i'll just give him one little bit of reminder here he'll stand one more time nope you didn't want to stop let's go again So I just, I just started a Patreon page. I'll be posting some other stuff there, some kind of real time stuff as it happens. <laughs> other YouTube trainers show the cake but never give you the actual recipe. That's true. I, I show you everything that I do on my website, I do have where you can pay to download how to teach certain things. This is really the important stuff. Let's do another one, see if I can get him a little closer. Stand a little bit better. If I stand a little better, I'll go ahead and quit. There we go. See, he moved off of my left leg into a better position. Now let's see if we'll get a step back. He's starting to listen to my cues a little better instead of just acting on his own. Now let's go over there. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. What I want to do is I want to reward that effort, letting him position him, let me position him where I want it. I do want to pick up the rope, but... Picking up the rope is not as important as rewarding the effort he gave me. See, he's not afraid of any of it. He wasn't afraid of it to begin with. It was his desire to do what I asked him to do that we was lacking. So I'm going to step off of him here. Good boy. So I want to reward the fact that he stood here. Let's go ahead and walk out here. So uh, I just started that Patreon page. I'll be posting a lot of kind of real-time things there. Not really live, maybe probably some live, but a lot of stuff as they happen. And uh, that way you can keep up with the individual horses training. Um, I want to thank you for, for joining me live today. Uh, again, this is Trigger. He's got a playlist. I'll put it up here top, on the top so you can... Uh, uh, take a look at how he ca how he got to where he's at. He's actually been a pretty nice horse to train. Until next time, thank you for watching.